Well, we are continuing uh, what I talked about during Seek Week. I said we're going to be talking about healing following Seek Week. And uh, for the next two weeks, we're going to be talking about that. And I do want to let you know that um, in the Seek Week, we had one night that was dedicated to healing. And um, we saw several people healed. I got testimonies coming in. Talked to one guy. There was a word of knowledge given at our Shockby campus that somebody there had a shoulder problem, and you think, well, shoulder problem. Um, what this person didn't know when the Lord was giving them this word of knowledge was, if this person's shoulder wasn't healed, they couldn't do their work, they couldn't do it. They were saying, we cannot move forward with our job, and this person said, that's me, that, that is me, I need that healing, and uh, he was miraculously healed. I saw him the next day, he's like healed, and so we saw that, we saw different things. I got a, a, a page of reports of all sorts of people saying this was healed, that was healed. Um, even people saying I came with low expectations and God exceeded that. And yet there were others that said, I prayed for people, I felt God's presence, but I didn't see it manifest. I, I, I don't understand it all. And I said, we're gonna continue to uh, dig into this. We're gonna continue to preach on it. We're gonna continue to go after it. And I referenced it, but for those that uh, don't know uh, about it, um, the Vineyard Movement saw healing really take place in their ministry when they started believing God for healing. And they just said, we're not giving up. We're gonna keep praying. We're gonna keep seeking God. And I just, I wanna have that tenacity in our church. I wanna have that desire in our church that we're saying, we're not gonna give up. We're gonna keep praying. We're gonna keep seeking God. We're gonna keep believing for a supernatural outpouring of healing to take place. And I will say this, it's a mystery. I, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching about something that I understand some of, I've experienced in some ways, but I still live in the mystery. I just gotta tell you, even in my own dad's life, I saw my dad uh, be miraculously healed of a back issue. He fell off a horse, the cinch on the saddle broke on the horse, and he, and he broke his ribs right next to his backbone. I mean, a half inch over, he'd been paralyzed for life. And, and, and he would never be able to sit in church. He'd have to walk around. He'd sit in the back row. And he'd always, I mean, just pain. He'd be in work in pain. And we were at a service one day, and the minister just looked at my dad and said, you're gonna be healed, and waved his hand at my dad. And my dad crashes down over the chairs. And I thought, now dad's really injured, you know. And, <laughs> and, and then he gets up, and from that day forward, miraculously healed his back was, I mean, healed, 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 all right? And most of you don't know my dad because he did pass away uh, years ago from cancer, which is part of this story. But my dad was like the kind of guy that wouldn't fake, you'd be like, well, probably fake that he, no, he wouldn't fake that. Dad was a, just a, a, a strong believer and he didn't fake it. He was miraculously healed and then later in life, uh, he had brain cancer. And we prayed with the same tenacity and the same faith and, and yet, we didn't see that miracle here, but he's healed in God's presence. So I live in that mystery. I live in that mystery just like you do, but I understand healing is for today, and I'm gonna align with what the Word of God says. That's what I want my life to do. Now, next week, we're gonna talk about Connor's healing. Many of you have heard that, and I've referenced it so many times, and as I go out and travel, people say, do you have a sermon with Connor's healing? And so I've asked Connor to, Join me with that, but Connor was miraculously healed of autism, and we wanna share that testimony, and uh, that'll be next week. So um, for those of you that missed Seek Week, and missed that sermon, um, I just got I'm gonna do a quick review, but I, gotta, I cannot say it enough. I keep saying it, I probably will stop this week, but um, the, the healing sermon that I did on Tuesday night, would love for you to watch it. It's on our River Valley Church YouTube channel, also, Tim Menlo's message on the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I, I could not recommend it enough. They're both there on YouTube. I want you to get there. Now, I want to do a quick review of the Seek Week sermon. And I uh, also want to let you know that some of you might like, I heard this uh, in 2015. Um, I preached on, which seems like an eternity ago. 2015, I preached a, a sermon on healing, a whole series. And I've taken some of the stuff from that because I'm just... I'm really believing that God wants us to reactivate this again. So just reviewing what I said on Seek Week and on that night, and this is something for the prayer teams, closed circuit for all the prayer teams. I talked about 
prayer teams that we are going to anoint the sick with oil. And at the end of this service, we are going to anoint the sick with oil. That's what the Word of God says in James. It's symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And they may anoint your forehead or your hand, whatever you're comfortable with, and we will do that because we're relying on the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God says for us to anoint you in that way. Secondly, we're gonna lay hands on you. We're gonna lay hands on your shoulder or perhaps like if you say, my hand is hurting, we may actually hold your hand or lay hands on your hand. If it's appropriate, we'll, we'll lay hands on you in that way. Otherwise, we'll just put our hands on your shoulder and pray for you, but we're going to lay hands on you because we see in the Bible that Jesus would lay hands on the sick. The apostles would lay hands hands, they would actually have a moment of, of transference, if you will, like God's power working through them and praying for that healing. And we're going to pray specifically. So prayer teams, please hear this. We're going to pray specifically. We're not going to pray like, Lord, whatever that was and, and whatever that, you know, we want to know what it is that they want to be healed of. And we want to pray specifically in Jesus' name. Now, we, Jesus paid for our healing and we've got to understand this. Uh, 1 Peter 2.24 talks about that by his stripes we're healed. He paid for this. He has paid for it and it is ours. And we want to see these miracles take place. And a couple of things that I shared on that night and again review, we need to see our faith increase because our faith plays a part of it. It's not all of it, but it does play a part of it. Matter of fact, there's one verse that talks about Jesus couldn't do many miracles there because they just didn't have any faith. They doubted, and it's interesting, they limited what Jesus could do. We're gonna take authority over illness. We're gonna cleanse ourselves. We're gonna break away from the world, and that's what fasting, it gets us, it breaks us away from the world and the things. We're going to appropriate what is ours. Now this I'm gonna spend some time talking about. We're gonna appropriate, and that means to take what is yours, to appropriate what is ours. And then in that night I talked about we're gonna thank God in advance, and that's what I love. We do praise and worship. We thank God in advance. And we're gonna focus in on Jesus because he's our healer. Now, I wanna start with appropriating that we take it as ours. And, and it's something that we've got to realize that before the healing takes place, we're believing God's word. We're believing what God spoke to us. And we're, we're like grabbing it in the spiritual realm. We're appropriating it and we're taking it and making it ours. Now, a lot of us say, if God heals me, then I'll be healed and I'll be happy. And God's like, no, I want to heal you. I want you to step out in faith and grab this. I want you to appropriate it. And, and I can give you a story from the Bible in Luke 17, verses 11 through 14. It says, um, now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along uh, the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. I want you to understand, it says, as they went, they were cleansed. They didn't say, okay, we're, we're waiting for the healing. And Jesus is like, go, go, go tell the priest you're healed. And, and they hadn't yet been healed but they were like, if Jesus said it, we're going. And they start moving, and as they're moving, they get healed. I, the, the faith they had to even move, I mean, just running like, still there, still there. You know, like, I mean, you, but running in the direction he said to go, and then it happened. And many times, like, if he does, then I'll believe him. Jesus is like, believe me first. Believe me, appropriate, grab this. It's a hard concept. It's a hard concept for people to grab because people around us talk us out of doing this, okay? Let me just show you. Like, if you say, hey, I gave my life to Jesus Christ and he forgave me of my sins and I'm saved. People are like, okay, that's good, you know. That's, yeah, that's good. Jesus is the Savior. I've heard that. Even a non-believer will be like, okay, that's good that you believe he's your Savior. That's, that's good, even a non-believer will agree with you on that one. You know, they're like, okay. They might not uh, do it themselves, but like, okay, that's good for you. Then you say, hey, I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit. I, you know, you take it a step further. I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit. I, I, I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I speak in tongues. And they're like, oh, you're one of those Christians. How many know that it intensifies just a little bit, right? Oh, you're one of those. And by the way, did you know that 26% 
of the Christians on planet Earth are Pentecostal charismatic Christians. So, oh, you're one of those. You're one of the 26% and growing rapidly, all right? But it just, it just ups the ante. And then if you say, I believe God can heal me, then they're like, oh, now you're going too far. Now, like saved, okay, baptized, you're one of them, but healing, now come on now, come on. And the world will push back, and even believers will push back, like, come on, you know, let's not, I mean, salvation's pretty good, let's not overlook that, you know, and I mean, praise God for that. But if God has something for us in addition to that, I want all that he has for me, all right? But we have to appropriate it, and again, it's so hard for us to understand this, And I want to use an illustration from my own life. Years ago, years ago, I bought a car online. Only car that I bought online, bought one online, and uh, went to one of our local dealers in the church and said, hey, I want to buy this car there. I want to have it shipped here. Okay. So I went to the dealership, did all the paperwork, did that, took care of the financing, did that, and got my car. And I walked around, I said, I got a car. And they said, well, where is it? I said, it's coming. And nobody said, you're crazy. I said, well, they, I, they said, where is it? I said, oh, it's, it's over in Chicago, and it's shipping. How long is it going to take? I don't know, seven to 10 days. It's, come, it's mine. I, this is my car. I didn't show up like, this will be, oh, yes, it will be mine. I didn't say that. I didn't say, it was like, this is my car. Like, it, it's mine. And I, I didn't say, it might be mine. It could be mine. It may or not be mine. It was mine. And isn't it interesting, when it came to a car with seven to 10 days through a dealership, nobody said I was crazy, but when it comes for healing, which is by the power of God who's the safe, like created everything, by the power of Jesus who's our savior, people are like, hmm, don't go being fanatical now. Okay, now here's the thing though. Like I at least had a, a shipping date of seven to 10 days or whatever, right? But when it comes to healing, we, we don't know exactly, like how many know like as people say, well, when does it come? I don't know, but it's been purchased and it's paid for and it's mine. Well. When is it coming? I'm not sure, but it's mine. And even if it doesn't come to me here, I'm going to get it. I'm going to heaven to get it. Isn't that interesting? We, we either get it here or we get it there. And someone said this, I don't know who to, who to give credit to, but they said, we are living in the long blink. This life on earth is the long blink. And so many of us look in this moment now and the things that hit us, we're like, God, I want this healing right now in this long blink, and someday we'll wake up in his presence, and he's like, there it is. But today is a long blink. But so, I don't know the delivery date, but I know that he said I can ask for it. I know that First Peter talks about it. I know that Isaiah talks about it. By his stripes we're healed. This is the God we serve, and I'm gonna align with what his word says. I'm gonna align with this right here, and I wanna just keep studying it, believing, having my faith increase, reading his word, getting all I can and leaning into this and saying, God, you are the God that heals. All right, so one of his names is Jehovah Rapha. As God was revealing himself, he's revealing himself to mankind over the ages and he's showing us who he is. One of his names is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. And in Exodus 15, 26, he said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. So God reveals one of his names as I'm the God that heals you. Our God is the healing God. He's a God of healing and redemption. He's a God of restoration. That is who he is. And he said, that's my name. Like, if you want to know what you can call me, you can call me the God who heals. And I want us to lean into that. I want us to lean into that name. And I want us to realize that more around us aligns and leans into healing than we realize. So I'll start with this. Our physical bodies... Our physical bodies right now are aligning with the fact that God is a healing God and that he created us with the ability to heal our bodies. Uh, The medical world aligns with the fact that we serve a God that heals. And I'll, I'll explain that in just a minute. And the supernatural aligns. So our body, the medical world, and the supernatural align there. And I could show you, like, the Apostle Paul had no problem with some people where he's like, hey, your body just needs to heal. 
Epaphroditus was tired and wore out. You know what he tells him? He says, hey, get some rest and some sleep. He doesn't say, hey, we're gonna pray and bind fatigue. You know, he doesn't do that. He just says, hey, get some sleep and rest and let your body heal from rest and sleep. He says to Timothy, he says, have some wine. What well, they used wine as a medicinal thing. He said, have a little wine for your stomach. He said, you got stomach issues? And have, so he said, take some of this in a form of medicine so it will help your, so, so it's like medical world. And then he, other times he's like, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name be healed. So all of these things are aligning. And so our bodies, first off, are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, 14 says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Our bodies are fearfully and wonderfully made to heal. Amen, amen. That's how we survive on planet Earth because God put within us as people the ability to heal. Even our natural body says, I will fight against this sickness. I will fight against this wound. I will heal. Our bodies are incredible. And I mean, we could almost do a series on how amazing the body is, but I'll just give you a couple of things. In one second, your body has 2 million red blood cells that return to your bone marrow and die. 2 million of them in one second. But simultaneously, at that same second, 2 million more are created to replace them in one second. I mean, this is amazing when you think about it. In 13 seconds, every 13 seconds, your body produces more cells than there are people in the United States of America, every 13 seconds, okay? Uh, oh, by the way, those blood cells that are in your body, they'll make a quarter of a million trips around your body before they go back to the bone marrow to die. This is fascinating, the way we're created. In the next 60 minutes, 60 minutes, uh, I'm just checking, uh, some of, all of us, all of us will shed 600,000 skin cells. You're just grossed out. The partner, the person that's like, you are shedding. All right, yeah. Isn't that amazing? And simultaneously, they're replaced. Your body replaces all the cells in your body every seven to 10 years, including your skeleton. It's replaced. We really are a clump of cells. I mean, you think about it, we are cells in this physical body. It's amazing what's going on. And our blood, our blood says, you should be healed. You should not, it wants to fight to, be, to bring healing. When there's a wound, there's the ability for the, the wound to tighten up and the blood tightens up and the platelets clump together. The, the clotting starts to stop the bleeding. The white blood cells rush to fight the germs. A scab is formed, which is a whole another incredible process. And then new skin goes over that. It's like the body is made to heal. Thank God for that. Thank God for your immune system. I mean, are we not more aware of our immune system now after having gone through the last couple of years with COVID, the fact that we are born with innate immunity and that we have adaptive immunity that your body recognizes, oh, we've had that before, and then all of a sudden it attacks the antibodies, go and attack that thing so it doesn't take over again. Incredible, your body is like, I am working in the way I was created to heal. I am working in the way to keep you alive. Colds, coughs, bones healing up. All of this is saying you were made to heal. And most of it happens without medical, but then medical comes in. But I wanna say this, if your body aligns with healing, if your body says, I wanna be healed, I wanna be healed, I wanna be healed, I wanna be healed, may our faith align with our physical body. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. But the second thing, the medical world, the medical world aligns with healing. And we are four doctors, nurses, the medical professionals. Matter of fact, can we just thank everyone that is in that profession right now? Doctors, nurses, medical professions, ambulance, paramedics, all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus didn't say like doctors are no good. No, instead he said this in Matthew 9, 12. He said, on hearing this, Jesus said, it's not the healthy you need a doctor, but the sick. He said, yes, yeah, sick people need to go to the doctor. Luke, who was a doctor, wrote the book of Luke and wrote Acts, okay? 
Um, if you, just a couple things about the medical world, but the medical world says, be healed, be healed. We wanna help you have your body be healed. And what's interesting is the medical world is just discovering what God knows about the way he created you. They're just getting glimpse into his, his knowledge. And every time they get a further glimpse into his knowledge, they're able to help our bodies to heal up more. And they need to give God the credit for that. But the first known dentistry was in 7,000 BC, and I'm not sure what country it was, but I'm guessing it wasn't England. But anyways, um, uh, there, there was 2,700, uh, sorry, 2,700, sorry to offend the English, all right. But anyway, the first known physician was credited in 2,700 BC. 27, and 100 years later, the first female phys, uh, physician was credited in Egypt, all right? But the medical world is discovering how fearfully and wonderfully made we are and when they get glimpses of God's knowledge, I thank God for smart people that are out there trying to discover what God knows. God says, like, my foolishness is smarter than your smartest people. Like, my foolishness, like, even a joke for me is, like, way beyond anything you guys are thinking of. So I love our comedian doctors, I guess. I don't know how to say it, but I love that they're discovering this. But think about it, transplants, pharmaceuticals, imaging, genetics, surgeries, lasers, Robots, I thank God for this. In 2014, I had a heart attack. I have three stents in my heart. And I thank God for the extension. that the, I met a, 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 a guy one day, I, I, I said, oh yeah, I have three stents. He goes, oh really, I used to work for Boston Scientific. And I showed him like my little thing with the picture of it. He goes, yeah, I helped design that. I was like, thank you for keeping me alive. Thank you for being a smart person that just wanted to understand a little bit more of God's knowledge. Thank you. I'll never forget when I was 11 years old. Um, many of you don't know this, but I was born with a caved-in chest, okay? My breastbone went in, and, and my chest was all caved in, and my esophagus was on this side, so they had to do surgery and move it over, and I was having pectus excavatum was the name of the surgery, and I walked into the doctor, and uh, his name was Dr. Chisholm, and it was at Children's Hospital in Minneapolis. Imagine this, this in the 70s. First time I meet him, I walk into his office and he goes, hi, Rob. He goes, I just wanna ask you a question. Do you believe in God? First question. I said, I do. And he goes, good. He goes, because he's gonna use my hands to heal your body and he's gonna be with me in the surgery. We need more doctors like that. That's what we need. So the best doctors work and treat the whole person. They realize they are not God and they are getting his knowledge and using it to align with be healed, be healed, be healed. That's the way we're created. That's the way doctors are wanting to do that. Nurses and the whole medical profession, they're saying we wanna discover these things that God knows about our bodies made to heal so we can extend life. We can help them live a full life. We can alleviate some suffering. We can help you have more days on this earth to either find Christ as your savior or give him glory and honor because he is your savior. Our bodies align, the medical world aligns. Come on, let our faith align with healing. Let our faith align. All right, so let's go to the supernatural because they all work together. They're not, they're not the enemy. They all work together in the supernatural. I just wanna focus on the gospels real quick because there are 54 healings in the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now there's duplicates. So if we had a duplicate, it's 90, but there's 54 healings that are in the gospels. There's basically a healing every one and a half chapters. Every one and a half chapters, there's a healing. And it makes sense because uh, Jesus is the, is the most foremost healer. Jesus is the number one, obviously, right? Okay, but you might say, well, 54, 54 like healing, that's, that's not a lot. I mean, it's Jesus. Let me read this verse for you, Luke 5, 15. Yet the news about him, speaking of Jesus, spread all the more so that Crowds of people came to hear him <clears throat> and to be healed of their sicknesses. Crowds, crowds came. We just have highlight versions. We just have like, okay, here's a story that stands out. Here's another one, here's another one. And, and there's more and more and more of Jesus healing people. Crowds and crowds and crowds. And it's supernatural. 
And if this is the life that Jesus lived, and this is what he did, I believe. He said we could go out and these signs would follow those who believe in my name. That we'd lay hands on the sick and they would recover. We're gonna keep doing it. We, we say, but what about that? What about what? I, I don't understand it. I live in the mystery. But I know that I'm allowed to ask for this. I'm, I know that I'm allowed. And, and please, if you're like, I, 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 he didn't answer at all. There's no way. I, I could do 20, ser- I could do a year of sermons on this. And I couldn't answer it all but I'm just asking us to have our faith aligned with what the word of God says, our faith to align with our bodies, our faith to align with the medical world, our faith to align and to say, let's get behind this even more. And Sam Storms came up with a list about Jesus healing and each of these could be a sermon. I won't make them a sermon, but each of these could be a sermon. And I just wanna point this out. The first thing he said is Jesus healed hundreds, if not thousands of people. Healing was not a secondary feature in the ministry of Jesus. Imagine that there were lines and lines of people. There were people fighting through the crowds to just touch the hem of his garment. There were people shouting at him in the cities that he'd go into. Jesus healed hundreds, if not thousands of people. Secondly, no one Jesus touched or who touched him was left unhealed. We have no accounts of Jesus going like, we gave it a try, you know, all right, never. Jesus, they were always healed. I'm leaning in. Jesus, what do you have? Like, what do you, like, what is going on? If this is part of it and you weren't like sometimes, like, I just want to lean into this. Another thing, he said, Jesus never inflicted anyone with a disease or ever suggested that sickness was a blessing from God for obedient people. He never said that. He never said that. He said, God can be glorified in this, but he never said like, yeah, you, this is a special sickness on you, like God put it on you. He didn't say that. He didn't say that at all. He basically, the world is broken and the Bible talks about it in Romans that all of creation is groaning. When people say, why is there sickness? Why is there suffering? This world is broken. It is groaning. It is crying out to be fixed. And healing is part of that restorative, redemptive, bringing it back to the right design. Jesus portrayed healing not simply as a sign that the kingdom of God was coming, but as an essential element in the very nature of God's kingdom. Remember, God said, my name is the God that heals you. It's not like it's just like there. He's like, I'm the God that heals. Jesus self-consciously healed people by the power of the Holy Spirit. Another one, most often his healings were instantaneous, but at least one occasion, it was partial and gradual. If you know that story, there was a time where Jesus prays for a man. And I have no idea, we talk about living in the mystery. Like all the other times of his healing, it's right there, instantaneous. But with this guy, he says, he's blind, and he says, can you see? He goes, I can see, but everybody kind of looks like trees, and it's a little blurry. All right, let's pray again. I don't understand that, but I know Jesus had to pray again one time, all right? So I'm just leaning into this, like, okay, but most of the time they were instantaneous. The healings of Jesus were subject to two factors, the presence or absence of faith and the purpose of his heavenly Father. Again, we're gonna talk about that next week. What does faith play in the healing? Because sometimes your faith has zero. Really? Yeah, we'll look at that but it had a part of it. It said, Jesus believed that many, but not all physical afflictions were the work of the devil. It said that. Jesus identified some sickness as unrelated to personal sin and at other times directly caused by sin. Jesus regularly healed the sick by laying hands on them. Let me go back to the one I just said though, because I said this on the healing night. I don't want to miss this. I don't want to say that without, like people, don't you dare condemn, like is there sin, is there sin? I've talked to people that are praying for healing for years and years and years and years and years. I went down and talked to one person. I don't have permission to say their name, so I won't. They were in a wheelchair, and I was praying with them. And I said, she said, like, thanks. Like, I've searched my heart a million, billion times. I said, no, no, there's no condemnation. This world is broken. This world is broken. And we're just believing in faith with you and standing with you. You're a great woman of God. You're a great woman of faith. We are standing with you. There's no condemnation. 
But we do see that sometimes Jesus said it, but I said, no, you have searched your heart and we love you and we, there's no condemnation. Jesus healed the sick by the laying on of hands and we're gonna ask our prayer teams to do that and pray in faith. And then number 11, Jesus never prayed for the sick to be healed. Instead, listen to this, he commanded them to be healed. You realize that? He never said like, I'm gonna pray. He said, I command you, I command you. The apostles, when they went out healing, they did the same thing. They commanded the sickness. Now James does instruct us that we're to pray. So we live in a world, again, does, I mean, it's complex, and I feel like I just basically opened this all up, and now you're like, now what? Lean in, that's what I say. <laughs> Lean in, take it from here. Do a Bible, start a small group, you know, let, come on. Dig into this, believe God for more. Come to church early, let's pray, let's seek, let's, let's lean into this, okay? But, so James instructs us to pray for the sick, but Jesus commanded the sickness. And then last one he says, is virtually all of Jesus' healings were motivated by compassion. Virtually all of them, motivated by compassion for the person. Jesus is our healer. And I'm praying that our bodies align with him as our healer. The medical world is aligning that we should be healed. The Bible says we should be healed. Jesus is our healer. And I wanna lean into this mystery. I wanna lean into this, what he paid for. And even though I don't understand it all, I'm gonna pray for every single person to be healed in Jesus' name. We're gonna pray according to your will. According to your will, be it done. We're not gonna wonder because we know he paid for it. It's wait. We're gonna pray according to your will, Lord, be healed in this moment. I want us to lean into this. I wanna have our faith aligned. I want us to realize healing is for today. We don't have it figured out, but I know this. I'm gonna ask for what I haven't figured out because Jesus says I can ask for it. So right now, Lord, I pray for here and at all of our campuses that we'd lean into this. I pray we'd lean into it. We'd continue to pray. we continue to ask. we continue to seek. And we'd not give up. We'd not grow weary in this. I pray that we would keep knocking, keep asking, keep going after it, and we would uh, see signs and wonders, miracles, healings, all these things taking place in your name. Uh, we are healed because you say we are. And I pray that we'd grab a hold of appropriating, Lord, that you'd either release into our now or we'd rush to it and get it in your presence. But God, we thank you for the ability that we have to pray for the sick, to believe for recovery in Jesus' name, and we will not let go of this. No matter how much the world snickers, no matter how much the world raises an eyebrow, we are not letting go of what you said is ours and you paid for. So let faith rise up in Jesus' name, and in your name, may we see healing come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen.